and I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. To be totally open and honest with you, Otour gave me this laser to test out. He also gave me a link down below that if you click on it and you buy a laser, I get a little kickback so you help out the channel. This is the Afuro Laser 2. They have the Laser 1, which is a little bit smaller, and then they have the Master Pro. This is right in the middle right here. So here's all the parts that come with this. It's pretty much all together. All the belts are already assembled. You just have to screw them together. The user manual has a QRF code that you use your camera on and it brings you to an online resource so you can see how to assemble your product. Before we move on to assembly, let's talk about the lasers that come with this. The Afuro Laser 2 comes with three laser options. The first one is the LU-2-2 laser module and probably best used for engraving. The next laser is the LU-2-4 short focus. It's mostly used for engraving and some light cutting. Finally, we got the Mac Daddy of lasers, the LU-2-4 long focus. This is primarily used for cutting, although you can do some engraving with it. I would highly recommend the LU2-4 short focus for people who want to do engraving and light cutting. But in the end, you're going to have to decide what you're looking for in a laser and buy accordingly. And to assemble the laser, all I needed to do was use 12 screws and it was pretty much done. I think in all, it took me about 30 to 40 minutes to get the whole thing up and running. As I was assembling it, I accidentally put the two motors in the front, so I had to take it apart and reassemble it. It'd be better if you follow the directions, unlike me, who decided to try to do it without, without uh, looking at the directions. But I did realize how well put together this thing is. It's made of some sort of aluminum, and the belts are already pre-assembled inside of those those side walls and the gantry. So my suggestion to you is take your time, look at the manual and put it together correctly. It'll save you about 20 minutes. Once it's all assembled, you can start plugging in the wires, but make sure that they're routed correctly because you could pinch them with pieces of the machine. As I was assembling this laser, all I could think about was Scotty getting Dr. Evil, his sharps with laser beams on his head. That's, that's kind of weirdly satisfying. Connecting it up is super simple. All you got to do is hook up the power, then the USB, and boom, it's ready to go. Once you have it all set up, hold the power button for five seconds, and it comes on. There are two different softwares you can use with this product. There may be more, but I'll talk about these two. First is Lightburn. It's compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux. It has a lot of versatility. You can draw, you can design, but it does cost $60 for a lifetime license. Then there's Laser Gerbil. It's absolutely free. It has very limited versatility, and it is only compatible with Windows. This is what I'm going to use today. Connecting your laser to your laser gerbil software is super easy. All you do is head on over to the connect button right here and hit it. It should show you connected. Then head down to the lock button to lock your laser in place for your starting zero. That's it. You're ready to rock and roll. To get started, all you need to do is bring up a photo right here. The Explorer will come up. Choose a photo. Make sure that the resolution of the quality is at about 15 and then choose your correct settings according to the chart. You can find those charts on the Orturo website. As we get started, I'm going to apologize for these horizontal bars in the video. That's caused by the flickering of the laser and the camera shutter speed and 
I didn't realize it until after I came and edited the video. We're starting off real simple with the LU 2-2 laser and we're doing the Afuro logo. This laser is strictly for engraving. I wanted to see how detailed it'd be, so I took a picture of the Tree of Life and I shrunk it down fairly small. This should give us an idea of the detail it'll produce. I decided to grab a couple of pictures off the internet. One, I grabbed a dragon and I kind of edited it up a little bit by using the white contrast and the bright and the grayscaling to see if I could get it to print pretty good. And it came out all right, but not great. The next thing I decided to do was Marvin the Martian. You have made me very angry. I thought this was a cute little thing, so I grabbed it off the internet and threw it onto the machine, and here it is. Working with the LU2-2 was pretty fun, but let's go ahead and use the LU2-4 short focus. I'll go ahead and bring up a picture of one of my granddaughters, and we'll see how it lasers out. So you can see it, but it didn't come out well because it's got a dark, dark background. So I'm going to change that photos and try something new. Here's another photo that I did. The first run, I did it at a very high speed and not too high of a laser power. I increased the laser power and slowed it down a bit and you can see it came out pretty good. First thing we gotta do is set this up. You just take it, put it on there. Tighten it down and should be good. I designed a vector in a spire and transferred it over to laser gerbil of wine and cheese into this red oak cutting board. Man, that looks really good. I thought it was kind of neat. You can actually engrave on fabric. And here I'm using some denim that they sent with the, the laser here. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> That's kind of neat. So it's light, but it's there, it says MPC. I decided to see how many passes it would take to cut through it. And it took about four at a pretty low speed. I think if I would have slowed it down just a little bit more, it would have taken less passes. And I wanted to see what it would look like to engrave on the leather. And it was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, then I decided I wanted to cut it out. It took, I think, five or six passes at pretty low speed, but it came out pretty cool. Right there. That's kind of a neat little thing to be able to do. I wanted to figure out what kind of detail this laser could do. So I found a dragonfly and a very detailed wolf design. That is extremely detailed. The results in the plywood were just amazing. So I thought I'd try it on the MDF and I really wasn't disappointed there either. And this is on MDF right there. Very detailed and it burns. That was at uh, 10,000 and 100% on the power. Not bad. One of the claims is that the short focus laser can etch stainless steel and to my amazement, it really did. At this point, I wanted to see what materials I could use to etch on or cut through with this laser. This is cardboard. That has a cool look to it. This is corrugated plastic cardboard. I tried it on the other side, which is white, but the laser won't cut into anything that's white. <laughs> that's pretty cool. The LU2-4 long focus has an air assist. So you're gonna have to find an air supply somewhere for it. Oh God, no, not that kind of air supply. What I'm talking about is a, like a fish tank air supply like you see right here. I got this off of Amazon for about 35 bucks. I'll put the link down below and you can go check it out. Unlike the other two lasers, you get this little metal piece that keeps you 
at the right distance for doing this. I've never used a laser before. So I started using this and I started playing with it and I did have a little bit of trouble figuring it all out. The first three times that I did this cut, it didn't cut through. And even this fourth time, I almost didn't get through. What I had to end up doing is slowing the laser down a lot. And there you go. Got a little bit, a little bit too much burning. I was curious to see how this uh, long focus would do engraving. I uh, decided to try to try it on the leather, so, and uh, you'll see in the end it really came out nicely. That does really good engraving. Look at that. For some reason, this is the thing that I wanted to try most with this long focus laser to see how well it etched into the stainless steel. This is three millimeter plywood and we're gonna cut out an M. To my amazement, it only took one pass. It cut one pass, beautiful. And this is five millimeter plywood. That did pretty good. One thing I learned when I tried to etch in my logo onto this acrylic is that this laser is not the laser to do engraving with. It's more like a blunt force to do stuff with. Now that I hear myself say that, I, d I don't believe it's true at all. I think that this laser would be just fine for engraving if I knew more about uh, the speeds and, and the power needs for engraving. Finally, I wanted to see if this would cut through black acrylic. I got this off of Amazon. I'll put the link down below. It took four passes, but I think I could have gotten away with speeding it up and going to three passes. So, four. Four rotations goes through the acrylic. I wanted to do one more cut before the end of uh, this video, and that was to cut out some concentric circles. It did pretty good. It only took one pass. So apparently one pass was all that was needed to actually get through these. And then the second pass wasn't really needed. I don't even know what to say about this thing. I was very weary when... Uh, Arturo reached out to me and asked me to test this out for him. I don't use lasers, so I'm a very I'm a novice when it comes to lasers. Leanne has one for X Carb, the JTEC. I I, I it's just uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I've just never used it, and I really and I did have my difficulties with this thing. I had some some cutting issues when I first started, but it was all me being a novice, not knowing how to do it. Okay. I didn't show all that in the video. I, I wanted it to be more of a what can this do, not what can Ken screw up kind of thing. This thing, it, it you have three choices of lasers. You have the LU, the LU2-2, the, the dash four short focus, and the long focus. If I was if I was a if I was a betting man, I would say the the short focus one would be the best one for most people out there, the novices like myself. Okay, and because it can cut through this three millimeter plywood right here, and it did. It cut through the leather, it engraves very good. You saw how, how detailed it was. I, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, this thing went together very easy. Like I said in the video, I think there were 12 uh, screws. And these things are kind of neat because they're even like coated. The short screws go on the sides and the long screws go in the back. The one thing I messed up is I had these two motors on the back here. I always put them to the front really easy, right? Um, and it took me a little bit while to get used to zeroing this out and being able to move it around and stuff like that so it cuts. All in all, this thing is amazeballs is all I can say, amazeballs. Uh, for a, a budget-friendly laser system engraver, this thing performs 
remarkably well. It wasn't a tutorial on, on the software. This was showing you what this machine can do. It's very lightweight. As you can see, I can lift it up. I'm actually gonna hang this on the wall back over here uh, for when it's not in use to keep it out of the way. It's very strong though. This thing does not flex at all. And I'm very, very impressed by this thing. So if you got any questions about what I went through or what I did or what my opinion of this or that is, let me know. All right, well, like I said, if you have any questions, head on down to the comment section. I answer 100% of my questions or, or comments. I reply to all of them on every one of my videos where I try. And if I don't get to them, I go back to them later when I get a chance. All right, if you could, please hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, and please share the video if you can. Until next video, stay cool.